the next prophecy that is coming to pass in the stars. It hasn't come to pass yet, but we have known of this prophecy since 2012. And that's really what I wanted to talk about today. So it's found in Deuteronomy 33, verse 26 and 27, and it's in the stars. So listen for the clues, okay? There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. And the next verse, Israel shall then dwell in safety alone. Okay, so what we have coming to pass in the stars, it happens in His Excellency, which His Excellency means king, it means ruler, um, and where we find that in the heavens is in the star of Regulus, which actually means little king. Regulus, in Latin, it means little king. Um, his Excellency, who would be a king, okay? Regulus is found in the heart of Leo. Leo is also the king. Um, and Regulus is right in the heart. What we have going on in the constellation of Leo in the beginning of August this year, 3,500 years ago written, coming to pass this year, is... Mercury and Jupiter, okay? Mercury is chasing Jupiter through the heavens. They have a conjunction at Regulus. Jupiter, Mercury, and Regulus have a conjunction. And Mercury is thrust out by Jupiter, okay? At the same time, under the arms of Leo, Venus comes in. The, is the, the God is thy eternal refuge. The eternal God is thy refuge, is what it says. Sorry. Okay, so Venus sweeps in into the arms of Leo. Okay, what I see in this prophecy, please go look it up um, on your star programs. Beginning of August, you'll see Jeshurun, Jupiter, Excellency, Regulus, Destroyer, Destroy Them, Mercury, and Eternal God, Venus. Okay? First of all, Venus represents love. So what we have coming in to the strength of the arms, okay, arms represents strength. And what we have coming in is love. The love circles into the arms and retrogrades back out. Love is what is going to do this work, okay? And the work that it's going to do, it, Mercury is the poison that has been sitting on the throne of the king. Mercury, that part of the medicine that's poisonous, it's been sitting on the throne, ruling in comes Jupiter, who is Jeshurun, which means the god of righteousness. Uprightness, righteousness is Jupiter, okay? He, righteousness comes in and thrusts out the poison from the heart, from the bloodstream. Okay? And this is all done by love, guys. It's not done by war. It's not done by destruction. It's Love that conquers all. So, what I see in this prophecy is the, the poison is finally being removed. And how is it being removed? Okay, by love, first of all. Second of all, mercury has other meanings. And mercury can mean merchant, M-E-R-C, Mercury merchant, and then merchant is related to market, M-A-R-K, 
It's the same word, okay? Marketplace. We know that there are a bunch of thieves, a den of thieves, sitting in the marketplace of the holy ground, okay? Which is our body, guys, which is the earth. And there's a bunch of cheaters sitting in the heart, sitting in, in the throne, ruling there. Righteousness finally comes in to thrust out. I see Jesus coming into the marketplace and overturning the tables of the money changers. Okay? Money changers, money is a currency. And a currency is a current current. It's a current of energy. So just like we talked about in the last video, God is raising the vibration, the sound wave, the energy, the frequency, blowing the trumpet. He's sending out a great wave of energy to overturn the currency, the current of the money changers. And the current of the money changers is for evil, it's for destruction, it's for lies, it's for delusion, it's for cheating. Okay? The ones sitting in the temple, guys, are the ones who read the Bible, who keep the Bible. They study, they memorize their verses. They are the Pharisees. It's the Pharisees who sit in the marketplace in the temple. And they are actually running Babylon because Bible and Babel are the same words. Okay, they are actually running Babylon and they've built a tower of Babel to heaven, thinking that they're going to reach heaven through their religion, through their hierarchy, through their tower of pride. Okay, they will not succeed. The energy that God, the wave that God is sending out, the current, is a current of love. And those who can hear the frequency of love, those who understand the language of love, will be on the side of righteousness. Okay? The scale of judgment is finally going to tip in the favor of the righteous. And those who will be overturned are those who still dwell in the darkness, in the low frequency, in the low vibration of fear, destruction, war, um, doomsday. Okay? This prophecy that's coming to pass in August, I believe, foretells of that, that this is a great time to catch the wave of God Almighty. It's a great time. The, the problem is, or the blessing could be, that you have to be atoned, in tune with Him. This is the atonement. You have to be in tune with that higher frequency. And that higher frequency is always positive, and it speaks of love. It sings a new song of hope and glory. It has absolutely nothing to do with darkness, destruction, or fear. Nothing. God is all light, and there is no shadow of turning in him. None. Okay, so as we are being awakened and enlightened, guys, God is helping us along. Okay, how? How? Okay. It's because long ago, a seed was planted with the truth of the hope and the glory. Okay? In fact, it's been in us since Adam. Jesus came to uncover that truth that's within all of our hearts and within all of our minds. He uncovered it by sweeping away the dirt, the lies, the darkness, and the fear. 
and pulling us up out of the grave, helping us to see the sun, helping us to see the day star, the bright and morning star. Jesus helped us to see the truth. When what we learn through Jesus is that we are sons of God, okay? This is God is within, Jesus told us. The kingdom's within. I am in the Father. You are in the Father. We're all one in the Father. We are all the organism of God, all of us. So you and I, as sons of the Creator, have the ability to create our own reality. When thine eye is single, how great and beautiful that glory becomes, okay? But when you have eyes of duality, when you're speaking of the hope and love of Jesus Christ out of your mouth, but then you're focusing and constantly talking out of the other side of your mouth about the fear and the destruction of Armageddon, of the evil destroyer, and of the enemy who you think still exists because you don't believe that Jesus conquered him, it, when your eye is focused on darkness, you are the darkness that creates the reality of darkness. Okay? Through our judgments, our fear, our biases, our racism against other religions, our competition against the sinners, to be the elect and to be the most holy and to boast of our works, we become those who create the reality of duality, of hatred, of lusting after the crown. It, it's foundation of this religion. The foundation is rotten. It's horrible to think in that way. It's horrible to think in that way. To think that you're going to attain the prize and oh well if my brothers are left. They were wicked. They have to be destroyed. They're wicked, so they have to be destroyed. That's so not true. Jesus said that it is the sinners and the tax collectors and the fishermen and the lowly and the meek that will help him to change the world. And this is why he chose those for his apostles. It's, it is those sinners that are going to change the world because they're not indoctrinated by their religion like the Pharisees. He didn't choose the Pharisees, guys. So if we study and focus and believe and memorize and hearken unto this word with all of our might, we are the Pharisees who get left behind, who miss Messiah passing by with this great wave of energy as he's doing right now, revealing his hidden truth, so as we have been taught to focus on the apocalypse, the end of the world, because, oh, our Savior will come at the end of the world. It, it's all a false idea, okay? Apocalypse simply means the revealing of hidden truths, disclosing of things that were formerly unknown. That's all apocalypse means in Greek. It means the revelation, okay? The revelation is for love. It's for higher wisdom, enlightenment, peace, and love. Okay? When we start to focus on the glory, and there are people out there working for the light, we start to tip the scales. Okay? As we take our journey through the valley of the shadow of death, through the grave, and if you don't know you're in the grave, you died in the baptism with Christ, and you have to go through the belly of the earth, the grave, just like Jesus. If you want to be like Jesus, okay? If you want to obtain the firstborn blessing, you've got to do what he did. So as we go through that valley, that uh, grave, the death, we start to learn in a different way. Okay, where we were previously out in the world indifferent to religion or God or the spirit. Indifferent. When we step into the grave and into the religion, we start to learn in a different way. And God showed us this, okay, where we are very, as human beings, we're very left-brained, guys. 
We're very left-brained. We rely a lot on our language, which is controlled by the left brain. And then we believe that the word is God. This word. We believe that this word is God because this is how the left brain analyzes the left, the human brain. Okay, we learn through language. When we step, however, into the grave, into heaven within, it's a deeper level of that which is within us, the kingdom of heaven within. We begin to see in symbolism, we begin to see in visions and dreams and different ways. We begin to intuitively notice certain symbols and we start to learn how to interpret those symbols. What we have done, what we were shown, is that we're stepping from the left brain, the analytical word, into the right brain. And the right brain is the creative, imaginative center of the brain. But this brain speaks only in parables. It usually does not have the ability of word. So it speaks in visions, it speaks in stories, parables, riddles, dark sentences. All of that, which we learn through the Bible, has a hidden meaning. Okay, so you can't t possibly take your vision, which is dark, visions of destruction, visions of all kinds of darkness. You can't take that literally because this doesn't know literalism. This does, but the kingdom of heaven does not. The it's the letter which will kill you. You cannot interpret this word or your visions, dreams, and symbols that you see literally. They have a hidden meaning. It's all portrayed through parables. This is how the right brain works. Okay? That's how you start to learn. And then you start to bridge the gap. This is where the truth lies. Okay? It's not in the darkness of this side where we believe that the word is God when we live on this side of the brain, you guys. What we learn when we step over to the right side is that the word is actually in the flesh, in the fleshy tables of the heart. So the actual truth of God is in the energy of the heart. The um, intention, the emotion, the hidden energy behind that which you say. So I'm going to swear it, okay? So if you're offended, turn me off for a minute. I'm looking at my little puppy, okay? Oh, you cute little shit. Okay, but all that's in my heart is love. That's my intention, that's the truth. That curse word doesn't exist. It's false. To me, it meant glory, beautiful little, cute little baby. Okay? To somebody else, it means, oh, so negative and dark and evil. Well, no, not if my intention was for glory and beauty and love and to give blessing. Okay, remember that blessing and cursing have the same meaning? They're totally tied together. Oh, bless it means oh, curse it. Okay, they have the same meaning. It's the word of the left brain means nothing unless you understand the intention, the energy, the emotion, the truth behind it. So, we are brought into the gap here, guys. The, the, the left and right hemispheres, there's a, 
a gap in between in our parietal sagittal area here okay and we're brought into that middle ground to start to discern which which is am I reading from my carnal physical world the senses of humanity that which we were given by God and what am I reading intuitively through the allegory and the symbolism of the spirit okay guys you have to become a master of the word a master of the language to be able to decipher it okay I know that there are a lot of prophecies about what's coming this fall but from what I can interpret through this prophecy coming in the stars um, the energy is changing for the good for the light and for the love okay the ones who then get swallowed up by this wave of energy coming are those who cannot understand the language of love that's being sent out and they get cast into outer darkness weeping and gnashing of teeth because it's babble to them babble gnashing of teeth it's it's babble they don't understand the language and they're interpreting it always for the dark side for the analytical literal written word which seems to prophesy of doom at the end but nowhere nowhere in this Bible to me now does the apocalypse ever mean doom and destruction it means it means the revelation of glory his full appearing the day when the light fully appears the revelation is what apocalypse means okay it's a revelation of glory guys it's his full appearing it's not for doom and destruction we've already been under the darkness under the serpent that we've been under the law and under the wor word this word okay which is our schoolmaster it's to teach us how to incorporate both what we see in the physical literal world and that which we know in our heart to be true of God the light and the life and the love that is the reality of this existence okay so I had the opportunity thank you to see um, a movie with my girls this weekend Tomorrowland and the end is so profound and so true that my daughter and I just looked at each other like who wrote this story because they get it they get it and here's a spoiler so if you want to go see the movie shut me off but what they basically realize is that the the program the programming is what is going to bring the destruction okay so guys what is the best selling story of all recorded history probably how many households relatively own a copy of this and what is foretold apparently according to the doctrines of men what's foretold destruction is foretold okay by the Christian who has not learned to interpret the symbolism correctly destruction is foretold okay this programming of the entire world by a book who if you don't understand it if you don't understand the riddle and the parable it foretells of judgment okay and so the whole world is moving in that direction according to what we've been programmed to believe about the apocalypse we've been feeding the dark energy because we all believe it we're looking for it we're thrilled by it we're addicted to Babylon's wine 
the evil spirit that resides in the book of the law, which sets before us good and evil. We're, we're thrilled by the evil energy in the book. And so we've been programmed and program others to believe in the doom and destruction of the apocalypse. Okay, We're feeding that wolf. And he grows and grows. Okay, the truth of Jesus Christ and shame on us is that the hope and glory of the future is for light and peace, not war. Harmony. Victory over the enemy. Nothing else. By love. Love is the conquering force. It's the highest frequency that cancels out all the lower vibrations. It's by love that the peace of paradise is won. So I encourage you guys to choose to feed the light. As, as children of God, you and I have the power to decide the destiny of the world. Because what you believe in becomes. What you speak causes death. Or what you speak causes life. As you think in your heart, you become. Our thoughts and our feelings are what create this reality. And one man, with hope and glory in his heart, can change the world. One man. And how dare we work against him? How dare we work against him by prophesying from the lake of fire? Baptism by water, baptism by fire, equals a lake of fire. You and I are the false prophets, prophesying out of the letter, the literal, the dark side of indifference. It's time to step over into the light, into the hope, and into the glory. And when we start to realize that this is a book that has nothing to do with the destroyer, nothing, he's a lie. He's dead. He's defeated by Christ. He doesn't exist. Except in those of us who keep him alive with our energy, with our death coming forth, with our negative thoughts, with our thinking of war in Armageddon. Okay? When Jesus came to say, don't believe it. I've conquered it for you. Believe in the hope and the glory and the peace. That's the truth of the future. If the sons of God make it 